Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a movie review this week for its 30th anniversary of Uncle Buck. John Hughes' comedy classic with John Candy as Buck Russell, who uh, came by to take care of the kids while their parents went away you know, due to uh, the mother's uh, father having a uh, heart condition and once he joins in he's he's the life of the party <laughs> okay and this is definitely my favorite uh, John Candy film in fact it's my number one after uh, planes trains and automobiles and spaceballs and many of the other comedies he's done but no doubt about it, it's my favorite of them all because his character does remind me of my uncle. I mean, this is like the uncle I never thought I would have, but still, this was like my uncle. Although, my uncle Louie does smoke a cigar a long time ago, and yes, he was overweight. He does actually uh, cook um, scrambled eggs by putting onions and tomatoes inside. Well, because Buck does that too. But no, he doesn't make giant pancakes. <laughs> Just like how he did it for uh, Macaulay Culkin's character's birthday. Yeah, Miles. And no, he doesn't drive a car which the tailpipe uh, blasts like a, <laughs> like a shotgun. <laughs> and the fact that it's so noisy and everything. And no, he doesn't have a small axe, you know, <laughs> and threatening um, uh, Tia's uh, boyfriend, Bug. <laughs> and this is where he explains it, or any of that. But yes, I mean, he's, he's actually one of a kind. He's very caring, even if he does act like a slob or so. I mean, he's, he's awesome. He's cool. I mean, best that we have. Oh, and of course, he doesn't use a drill, either, like he does. And yes, this is the double feature Blu-ray that came with um, another comedy classic with Chevy Chase called Fletch. And it's nice to have that because, hey, why not have two awesome comedies together? But sad to say, Uncle Buck did not have features. It's all bare bones. It's on the BD-50, has a lossy uh, Adobe Digital Sound, but what can you do? <laughs> so it's on the cheap. Then again, the DVD was always bare bones anyway. <laughs> they never bought it to put a featurette, no trailer, no TV spots. You know, like they could have had one from back in the day when John Candy was still alive. Um, that would have been done specifically for the Laserdisc or something and it would have been ported everywhere. They never had an audio commentary with producer, writer, and director John Hughes to explain it, you know, how he got this made or anything, what came to be. Nothing. And I think that's a shame. But nevertheless, I mean, this movie was popular. It was at number one at the box office ever since it came out on a Wednesday. August 16, 1989, which surprisingly enough started to have two TV series uh, based on the movie. Yeah, the first one being on CBS with Kevin Meany, no longer with us, like John Candy. Um, he was about to play the part, even though he never did once saw the movie, which they had to change the storyline from the film. Where this time, you know, their parents have passed away, you know, due to a car crash, and he takes over for legal guardian, you know, to watch out and take care of the kids, well, and in case something goes wrong. And then they had the the 2016 version that aired on ABC with Mike Epps playing the part, you know, a skinny version of, of Buck Russell. But an African American cast. 
and that one failed too. <laughs> so that's why it's best to stay away from both of them. But I guess if I had to go between the two evils, I'll take the one with Kevin Meany instead. But no one could top uh, John Candy's performance as Buck Russell because this is one of his excellent performances uh, right up there with, once again, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. His best work also. <laughs> okay. And plus, um, this was the starting point for Macaulay Culkin too because, yeah, long before he wants up... Uh, <laughs> having his own uh, website for bunny ears and the fact that he appears in in AVGN, yeah, Angry Video Game Nerds videos and Red Letter Media come to mind. But yes, Macaulay Culkin was the most popular child actor of all time and this was before he wants up Lenny in the role in Home Alone as Kevin McAllister. And he got to play him in the first two films that were very successful. But John Hughes uh, writing and producing the film and Chris Columbus directing it. Excellent. So, <laughs> yeah. And of course you got uh, Gabby Hoffman um, who's done some different work after this. And, and you got Laurie McCaff from Roseanne to be in this. Uh, Amy Madigan who, who's been in other work including the, the Dark Half, the yeah, George A. Romero film, uh, Jean Louisa Kelly with one of being in a TV series called uh, Yes Dear which had Michael Malley from Get the Picture and Nickelodeon Guts yeah that guy. So you get everything. I started watching this movie when I was a kid. I loved it. We rented this a lot. Um, I later taped it on TV when it was on USA Network I mean, as a tribute to John Candy when he passed away in 1994 you know, due to a heart attack that he had while filming the film Wagons East with Richard Lewis, uh, John, G John C. McGinley, among others. Which, yeah, really uh, was a very sad, depressing point for his career after his uh, last performance in Cool Runnings. Yeah. But he always will be a legend. No doubt about it. He'll always be remembered because he's one of the greatest comedians ever. He does have a heart, and you can tell. So, and yes, the Blu-ray, this is what it looks like. <laughs> of course. And sad that only Fletch has all the features instead of Uncle Buck, but what can you do? <laughs> um, however, they did release Fletch uh, Lives, the sequel uh, of the first film that was um, that's also available from Universal. So. But I guarantee you there's no features either. <laughs> okay, well, anyway. Stars John Candy, Jean Louisa Kelly, Macaulay Culkin, Gabby Hoffman, Amy Mannequin, Jay Underwood, Lloyd Metcalf, Suzanne Shepard, Mike Starr, Jared M. Brown, and Elaine Bumka. And it's produced, written, and directed by John Hughes, who gave us films like Sixteen Candles, The Breakfast Club, Pretty in Pink, among others. The movie begins when we meet the Russells, Bob and Cindy Russell, the mom and father, both played by Garrett M. Brown and Elaine Bumpka, along with their three children, 15-year-old Tia, who is basically stubborn, rebellious, and uh, moody, an 8-year-old Miles, who's uh, Actually, pretty cool, you know. I mean, he's also uh, <laughs> quirky and loves to uh, do a lot of uh, crazy stuff. And then you got six-year-old uh, Maisie, you know, who's very cute. All that. Um, they're all played by Jean 
Louisa Kelly, Macaulay Culkin, and Gary Hoffman. They just recently moved from Minneapolis to Chicago due to Bob's promotion. But later one night, they receive a phone call from a relative in Minneapolis, which turned out to be Sidney's father, who just got a heart attack. So they made plans to leave immediately to see if if her father would be alright. But then after hearing the news, uh, Tia suddenly felt pretty bitter about having the force to be moved. That he actually accused Cindy of abandoning her father. Which she should have never had. So Bob suggests to ask his brother Buck, who is played by John Candy, to come over and watch the children while they're away. But Sydney suddenly objects because of, of what Buck Russell's attitude is. I mean, of course, he is unemployed. I mean, he does go around drinking, smoke cigars, um, and also earning his living, uh, betting all these uh, horse races around. And yes, and he's also a Chicago Cub fan. As you can tell from wearing uh, <laughs> his jersey, and he also has a lot of a lot of all the memorabilia here and there, and all this other stuff that he got. So, so, so anyway, he lives in a small apartment in Chicago, and he actually drives a 1977 Mercury Brockham Coupe. Yeah, and that's the one that. Uh, that actually smokes and backfires with the, the tailpipe because <laughs> so like no matter what he does when he stops by I mean all that tune up from the the tailpipe uh, suddenly just uh, like like it sounds like a shotgun I mean it just shoots completely so anyway his girlfriend Shanice who's played by Amy Madigan owns an automobile tire shop. Um, they've been together for eight years but and she wanted to get married and start a family but even though Buck had accepted a new job at her shop since no one else could help he can't do that because he has a family emergency to take care of I mean due to um, you know, Bob and Cindy you know having to take care of Cindy's father so he had no choice. That's why Buck couldn't uh, take the job for a while. But it's it's just it, it's pretty difficult. So once he arrives, uh, Buck quickly uh, befriends with both Miles and Maisie, so they get along pretty well. Um, but unfortunately, not Tia, because you know she is totally. Uh, you know, rebellious as usual, she doesn't want to deal with him, doesn't even like him that much anyway. So they both have a battle of wills. We also learned that Tia has an obnoxious boyfriend named Bug, who's played by Jay Underwood, who basically warns her over sex, which <laughs> when Buck first met him, <laughs> this is where he asks the question, have you ever heard of a tune-up? <laughs> and then he says, ever heard of uh, ritual killing? <laughs> he says, I don't get it. You know on her face in public again, you'll be one. <laughs> yeah. Gotta love how he does make a fret uh, towards him too, because <laughs> that's where he starts to take out the axe. Okay, uh, I don't want to give that away, but you get it. Throughout uh, the last couple days, um, he's spending more time at home, taking care of of all the kids. You know, doing what he does. You know, <laughs> he also makes uh, a big giant pancakes uh, for Miles because it's Miles's birthday and actually celebrating it uh, with his friends um, 
he actually did invite a clown to come right over, but that became a problem because we learned that the clown actually had a, went to a party, a stag party, and got all drunk. Um, that it's going to be much worse if he starts to do something crazy. So that's when he tells that guy to get on your mouse and get out of here. And he just sucker punched him in the face twice. <laughs> oh, wow. He also um, berated a, a school assistant principal mostly because of her being over strict about Maisie's behavior in class, which well, even though uh, Maisie didn't do anything wrong, I mean, she's, she's very sweet. Of course, she did start to, to curse at times uh, from the teacher. I don't think I want to know a six-year-old who isn't a dreamer or a silly heart. I sure don't want to know one who takes their student career seriously. I don't have a college degree. I don't even have a job, but I know a good kid when I see one, because they're all good kids. Until dried out brain dick slacks like you dragging them and convincing them they're no good. You're so much a scow of my niece or any other kid in the school, and I hear about it. I come looking for you. Take this quarter. Go downtown and have a rat gnaw down that faint off your face. Good day to you, madam. <laughs> Yeah, that's a pretty funny scene. Even though this was before, before that happened, though, you know, he just came right over the class and takes a cigar, smoking, and then wants to going straight to the bathroom, just puff out of that smoke, and then he, he wants to uh, going straight into those journals that were very small. <laughs> yeah, well, the song. Uh, Wild Fame by Tony Locke uh, plays in the background. <laughs> yeah, that was really cool. Okay. He also handles the laundry when the washing machine doesn't work. Yeah, he was having trouble with that. And then suddenly we meet uh, Marcy Dog Green Foss who just came over just when the dog, yeah, their dog, just came by and starts licking her ass. <laughs> Scares her away and then he ex she actually overhears uh, Buck uh, messing around with the uh, washing machine. Which also leads to a bigger problem too when when Tia suddenly found out that just well trying to actually call uh, Shanice that to actually come right over, so this is going to lead to bigger trouble when she found out that uh, Marcy came over the following day, and and this is where Buck was just uh, dancing to a, a tune, which I <laughs> know they, which yeah, he did that awkward dance until <laughs> that they both um, bopped their heads together. <laughs> So when uh, Shanice found out, uh, that's when he got angry at him and decided to leave. It only gets worse when Tia suddenly sneaks out of the party and Buck decided to go look for her rather than attend at a horse race track. So he was going to join in with Miles and Maisie. But Apparently he decided he'll just call and and beg uh, Shanice to watch over them. So that way he'll be able to find Tia. But then we learned that Tia just got broken up by uh, Bug. Well, by the time uh, <laughs> Buck finally arrives at the party, that's when um, we learned that... Uh, Bug was hanging out with another girlfriend. They're about to have sex, and he just uh, came over, just using the the power drill to open the door. And this is where he takes Bug and ties him up, and put him straight into the trunk. 
then he found the Tia who just who just ran away already in tears after what she found out so now um, <laughs> so now Buck suddenly um, gets his revenge joining in with Tia to actually uh, stop Bug already tied up you know just half with it, already half naked and then <laughs> and later yeah, Buck actually struck um, a few golf balls at him oh that was funny so at home Tia helps Buck reconcile with Shanice by admitting her to lie and tell Shanice that Buck will, will be a good husband and father if he agrees to start the job at the garage so that's what he does so now they have to have everything set up um, so until Bob and Cindy return from Indianapolis because they found out that Cindy's father had recovered from a heart attack and once they enter the house you know Tia was very surprised by her mom and they gave a hug and everything was going so well until <laughs> Buck accidentally knocked over um, all these pans and pots that were already set up uh, on top and then <laughs> then he said shit so now Buck and Shanice had then left for Chicago with Buck and Tia exchanging loving goodbye and they wave and there you go <laughs> okay that gave away but you get the idea very hilarious funny comedy that I love and this really uh, spoke to me completely I mean this it's just um, very fun. I love it. I love all the funny moments in the movie that's in there. I mean, there's like tons of funny scenes in there <laughs> that you'll never forget. Um, but I don't want to give away too much. I already mentioned the croat here and I, here and there. I know it's hard, but I'm just trying to keep up with it. But John Candy, of course, was excellent as the role of Uncle Buck Russell. I mean, you could tell that even if he is a slob, you know, you know crass and and <laughs> and all of that. I mean, he's still a loving and caring guy that you want to hang out with. I mean, he knows he cares for everyone, even if they're going through hard times here and there. Um, Macaulay Culkin was hilarious too. I, you know, this is definitely the perfect role that that would have gone up to become. That would actually wind up to become uh, Kevin McAllister later in the Home Alone films, the first two, to be said. But he was excellent. Um, there was that one quote that he said to a Buck, which this is also memorable too. Was where this is where they start their conversation when they first met, where they said, "Where do you live? In the city? Do you have a house? Apartment? Own or rent? Rent? What do you do for a living? Lots of things." Where's your office? I don't have one. How come? I don't need one. Where's your wife? I don't have one. How come? It's a long story. You have kids? No, I don't. How come? It's even a longer story. Are you my dad's brother? What's your record for consecutive question ask? 38. I'm your dad's brother, all right. You have much more hair in your nose than my dad. How nice of you to notice. I'm a kid. That's my job. <laughs> I love that exchange. That that was uh, memorable. Uh, another memorable scene too was when um, Miles um, actually brought in some of his uh, lunch uh, you know, while hanging out with uh, his friends, and, and then <laughs> and then by the time he explains that about his uh, lunch that he brought in, he, all the kids suddenly <laughs> you know just move away from him. <laughs> Like they 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 screamed and they got <laughs> uh, oh boy uh, also uh, Gabby Hoffman was pretty cute too as uh, Maisie <laughs> and of course the conversation with Buck was also interesting too I even love the scene where he actually explains uh, to his teacher about um, about what he does at home. <laughs> oh 
Okay, I know. Um, Tia was played by, G um, anyway, uh, Jean Lewis uh, Kelly played Tia in the film. She was alright, I mean, considering that she's basically moody, rebellious, and always stubborn at times. I mean, yes, she, at times she doesn't speak, and you know, she does drink coffee and all that. And I know she she doesn't like Buck that much, so until she suddenly uh, she suddenly gets used to it after a while, especially when they were going out for bowling and some guy suddenly uh, jumps in, you know, trying to get to know her, but but then Buck just you know tell him to get out of the way and you know, leave. Also explains to her and everything. That sort of thing. Uh, Amy Madigan was good, considering that you know she's, you know, she owns a auto shop. You know she has to deal with um, her problems here and there, and just wants uh, Buck to to get married someday so they can have a family of their own. That sort of thing. Of course, Lori Metcalf. <laughs> Basically, uh, it's basically just a French lady, neighbor next door. You know, just suddenly flirts with uh, with Buck, especially uh, during that dance scene, as I mentioned. I mean, very awkward one. Well, you get the idea. I mean, it's basically what this comedy really is. You know, Uncle trying to take care of the kids while the parents run away, and there's also scenes where he's basically lazy too. Especially when he actually talks to the dog while pouring some um, <laughs> some liquor onto his uh, dog dish, and then just explains about you know, his problems that's going around, that's happening while he's like laying on the couch. You know, wow. You know there is a TV cut uh, for the film. That actually had more scenes um, than the theatrical version, and I actually remember that when I saw it on USA Network or the Disney Channel too. That I, I know, I wish we could find those, and let's we could find it on YouTube somewhere. <laughs> yeah, and it's too bad because we could have had tons of that on the the Blu-ray. But the Blu-ray was pretty solid too. Just, uh, just could have been better. So yeah, um, but it's a funny comedy. You know you'll love it. It's definitely one of uh, John Candy's best work. Also one of John Hughes's best work too. Even Macaulay Culkin's as well. <laughs> so you'll love it. And I'll still miss him too. I mean, I love his work, and I just, I, I wish, I wish this never happened in 94, but I understand, I mean, he was overweight, he had a health uh, problems that he was going through throughout the years, I mean, he's doing the best he can to, um, for the audience to, to love and all that, because... There won't be any other comedian like uh, John Candy, not even the John Belushi or even Chris Farley for that matter. But however, we we would have a lot of follow-ups here and there, and hopefully they'll they'll stay true. I mean, hey, same goes with Robin Williams and Andy Kaufman and Bernie Mac and all the rest. I mean, I mean, you really miss these guys. I mean, they, they brought in all the laughs, too. Uh, yeah. So anyway, that's uh, Uncle Buck. And I give the film five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.